What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, B. Octavia, and I am back with another video. Today, we will be discussing Bobby Brown. Of course, the world knows and loves Bobby Brown for who he is, who he was, and who he was always destined to be, which is a great father, a great husband, and so on and so forth. We know of his ups. And we know some of his downs and his very bad moments, both as a member of New Edition, as well as during and throughout his marriage. But there is one down and one really bad moment that Bobby Brown will not talk about. Today, we will be talking about when Bobby Brown was allegedly kidnapped by the preacher crew i want to start this off and say even if i don't say allegedly until the end before i go on to another sentence just put allegedly in front of it i, I didn't say it allegedly everything is alleged ladies and gentlemen and it's something that i was looking for in the biopic that he was behind and working with directors and the uh what's his what's his name woody the actor who was portraying him giving him pointers and so on and so forth i thought it was going to be more of of bobby brown this in no way shape or form is slander in these alleged situations that i talk about from anybody from the past it could be performers it could be street legends and and drug dealers and not not so nice people but in these alleged scenarios that i talk about with you guys there's always a lesson or two or three or four embedded throughout these stories that can and should save a lot of people. It's something that allegedly occurred that Bobby Brown will never talk about. Bobby Brown cannot and will not speak about being kidnapped and held for ransom by the Preacher Crew. A notorious gang known for its torture tactics and is said to be responsible for 47 murders and that is just by the early 1990s. As Bobby Brown made his transition from member of a group to a solo artist, he became a Grammy Award winner, but that did not make him exempt from going through what a lot of, a lot of artists face. A tumultuous public relationship than marriage, and a drug addiction that can make any man very, very unlikable in the public eye. But this drug abuse also made Bobby Brown allegedly rack up a debt with a New Jersey dealer that maybe he forgot to pay. Because at that time, in allegedly April 93, he had had quite a few solo hits so maybe maybe that debt he just simply forgot allegedly the couple married in 1992 bobby christina was born in 93 bobby brown released quite a few successful singles in the early 90s including two can play that game good enough and humping around the early 90s was very eventful now even though the preacher crew they sold drugs as well out of the projects that they was controlling bobby brown did not make this debt with the preacher crew dealers and big time folks would come to the preacher crew having this fearful reputation when folks wouldn't make good on their debts in a timely fashion. Clarence Preacher Heatley and his crew methodically kidnapped and tortured many men. A lot of people may think of torture just as beating somebody for a long period of time. It, it could mean something more serious, right? But in Bobby Brown's case, his career 
and him being so known honestly i feel like that's what kept him alive you feel what i'm saying but in his case torture meant him meant him being a grown man being stripped butt naked hog tied in a room full of grown ass men probably saying some very obscene things that's enough to make any grown man cry the way i see it is if a hog tie is done right it'll be done like the mob because if you move too much or if you struggle in this hog tie you gonna end up choking yourself to death and if you are taken in any projects in new york there is no method of escape the people that live there and operate out of there are the only ones that truly know how to make it in and out allegedly bobby brown owed a little over twenty five thousand dollars to a drug dealer this drug dealer went to clarence the preacher crew lured him to a manhattan nightclub where the party favors aka high grade cocaine club is jumping with the best music and it's women and drinks just the flowing. The girls that the preacher crew had working for them was working it and got Bobby to agree to come to a Bronx apartment with them after the party with promises of some sort of happy ending. Once Bobby made it through the threshold of that Bronx apartment, somebody dropped him with one punch. This part of the account of what happened is from the perspective of David Popcorn Collins, who once was a very loyal member of the Preacher Crew. So once Bobby Brown started coming to, he realized he was naked, hog-tied, and afraid. They also gagged him by stuffing a rag in his mouth and I don't know, maybe it is some type of OCD forming in me because I just could not get past, like, I even wrote it down. Like, I really hope that that wasn't, like, no dirty ass rag. <laughs> I hope that rag wasn't dirty as shit going in his mouth. And that is no ditty, especially with what, what is going on. You feel me? Anyways, the initial debt was a little over 25K transformed into a ransom in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars mostly going to the preacher crew now do you think that the dealer who came to the preacher crew with this knew that they was going to do this for over a meal you think that the new jersey dealer got any type of cut other than what he was you feel what i'm saying no no so you should have did it yourself and then you could have put the ransom at however much you was going to do it for all right and then you would have pocketed that money but see that that's what happens too when you get other guys to do it they'll do it right but they're going to get more than you get even though it was your problem in the first beginning it didn't take long for word to get back to whitney houston and I'm sure the crew's reputation spoke for itself. It wouldn't have took for you to talk to too many people about the Preacher Crew without them saying, oh, them boys for real. There was no question. Once you dropped their name or the area, the location, it wasn't going to be no question if they would make good on their threats to kill him or, or break his legs something that he still needed at the time their ransom was allegedly paid and dropped off by whitney herself she was reunited with him shortly thereafter and reps for whitney and bobby brown have never and do not wish to comment on this topic no police reports were made by bobby brown and the thing that i admire about people like him and whitney is that if you don't talk about it, it never happened. Most women, after going through a divorce and you, you share a child with him and there's some resentment there and, and bitterness or whatever people want to label it as, pain. Pain is what it is. 
But most women, they would be so ready to tell everything of what they've done for a guy. And vice versa. I think that if Bobby Brown wasn't married, he would talk a lot more about his experience with Whitney. But out of respect for his wife, he chooses not to. A great example of that as well is when he came upon the graves of Whitney and Bobby Christina. He just didn't say much. And I know it was because his wife was in the vicinity as well as being filmed, you know, for your wife to see or for anybody to see to feel some type of way, you know. He definitely played it safe. And I just hope that he gives himself time to actually talk to her spirit. And you don't have to be like at the grave. You don't have to continuously get up on a mountain and say, I love this person. I loved her so much. Nobody's looking for that. But when you don't have much to say it means that a lot of things don't have to be said a lot is understood just between those two souls so i do respect him for not divulging too much i'm um, keeping certain things sacred keeping a lot of his thoughts private and I just hope that he does give himself time to write those things down or just simply when you have a long time, just, you know, sorting out what you really feel versus what you're holding in um, in fear of hurting others. I am super proud of him for changing his life. He went on to have to have a few other kids with his new wife and they seem to be good for each other she seems to be good for who he is now and i think that it's dope to see because the person that he is nobody would have thought that he would end up being so calm and so re reserved and it's still bobby brown but it's just a very much more mature version um, a lot of people didn't expect that. So I don't even think they would have been each other's type. I, they got an age difference too, but that's not what I'm talking about. They wouldn't have meshed well back in the days because he was a different person. The person that he was meshed well with Whitney. But I, I stand firm on believing that they shouldn't have been together that long. And also it was good that they did eventually break it off because... Both of them would have ended up losing their lives. That type of addiction as time went on and as time goes on, everything has fentanyl in it. Everything is laced with something or another. It's not no addiction that I would wish on anybody. Again, very, very proud of the man that he is today. Very proud of him. Them as a unit for getting him up out of that. The Preacher Crew again, is responsible for 47 murders, and including a little boy who they kidnapped that was one of the member's nephew. They botched that one totally. Wanting a hefty ransom, uh, ended up cutting his finger off, and he ended up bleeding out. So there are murders and ransoms and kidnappings that they didn't do right. And um, I'm sure as everything hit the fan and all of them were, were arrested and put away, that it made Bobby Brown even more grateful of life. Grateful for getting another chance. If you love somebody, you will pay anything. You Some people would pay with their life to save somebody else that they love. So... This story is a testament of love because I know some women that even if they had nearly half a meal to spend, like to just drop, they still wouldn't do it for half of their family. They still wouldn't do it for the guy that they choose to lay down with. So it just, it goes to show you the amount of love that they had for each other, but that she had for him. It's your girl, B. Octavia. Thank y'all for watching, tuning in, and I will see y'all in my next video. I'm finna go make me something to eat because I'm hungry as fuck.